Great to see you. Thanks for coming back tonight. Um, you know, every, it seems like every time we're together is a little different. You know, there's a little different flow. Uh, this year, I don't know, it just seems to be more uh, teaching and instructional oriented. Uh, you know, I, I do, as I said this morning, I like to run around, jump the pews. Maybe I can do that next time if the Lord will let me. Amen. But I've got some things in my spirit that I felt like he wanted to share with us that's going to help position us and uh, improve or enhance our personal walk with God. And, and that's essential because the more uh, efficient we are in certain things uh, personally and in the relational aspect, the more effective we can be in other areas as well. So uh, you ready? This morning, uh, we spoke uh, specifically about navigating the year of 2024. If you were not here, raise your hand if you weren't able to be here. If you weren't, uh, you may can get, uh, watch it online or something. I don't know how y'all do that. But we just talked about navigating the, the year of 2024 successfully. And tonight, I want to give you some information uh, that will hopefully uh, not only deepen your personal walk and fellowship with God, uh, but it will assist, once again, in positioning us for this year and uh, helping us have a greater sensitivity uh, to the Holy Spirit and His leadership. I used to teach a course called uh, The Disciplines of the Christian Life at Rhema Bible uh, Training Center. Was anybody in my class there years ago? Okay, there you are. Disciplines of the Christian Life. And our textbook was from a guy named Richard Foster who wrote Celebration of Discipline. But he made this comment or statement. He said, superficiality is the curse of our age. The desperate need today is not for a greater number, number of intelligent people or gifted people, but for deep people. Those who will move beyond the surface into the depths. Amen. So, you know, you and I understand that uh, the fullness of our Christian life, all that God has designed that we be, that we do, can never be achieved apart from an intimate relationship with Him. Uh, that's why John 15 and 5, you're familiar uh, with the Scripture. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abides in me, that means makes his home uh, in me, his dwelling place, and remains vitally united to me, one translation says, and I in him. The same brings forth much fruit, uh, for without me or apart from me, uh, you can do nothing. So we understand that the, the word abide is, is not a passive term. It's an active one, right? So there are things that we do as a believer to enhance and cultivate uh, intimacy uh, with God and with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we also realize this intimacy can never really be achieved apart from, uh, you know, certain uh, facets that we engage in, Bible reading, prayer, right, occasional fasting, uh, times of devotion, all of these things are important, other spiritual disciplines that we may exercise uh, ourselves in. Uh, we know that. Separating ourselves from the contaminating influences of the world upon our heart. Uh, all these things nurture an intimacy with God. But in addition, and the one thing that I want to emphasize tonight, is a strong key to maintaining intimacy with God is staying connected to Him throughout our day. Are you with me? Staying connected. There's, there's so much noise in the world. There's so many voices. There's so much distraction vying for our attention away from uh, the focus of and uh, the acknowledgement of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and a true perpetual and continual communion with Him uh, throughout our day. So learning to cultivate, if you will, an internal awareness of God's presence, this moment by moment, day by day, 
God-centeredness is going to greatly enhance our intimacy, our closeness, and our sensitivity. Now, uh, you know, for, for many Christians, I won't say most, but for some, uh, their fellowship with God surrounds uh, or, or is, is basically uh, surrounded by an event. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a morning devotional time or maybe a corporate setting service on, on a weekly basis. And, and that is their fellowship and that is their, their engagement with God. But how many of you know uh, we're not in a dating relationship with God? We don't pick him up on Sunday morning and drop him off on Sunday afternoon. We're married to him. And one of the essential qualities of marriage is constancy. Can anybody say amen that's married? Amen. Constancy. So in light of that reality, we can't allow our Christian experience uh, to become isolated to an event or a period of time because it reaches far beyond that. So Psalm 9 and verse 1 Notice the psalmist said, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. Now notice, with my whole heart. Here's another one, Psalm 119 and verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. The Moffat translation says, Lord, I give to you an undivided heart. So an undivided heart is a heart that has a central focus, right? A heart that is not separated or partitioned off into a multitude of affections like you would cut a pie into pieces. You know how we do? <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, in our human nature... We have a tendency to segment our lives like a pie cut into pieces. And particularly men, uh, you know, we segment. Uh, this part is for the spouse. This is for the kids. This is for the job. Uh, this is for my personal leisure and enjoyment. Uh, this is for church. Uh, this is for work. Did I say that? And, and uh, uh, this piece is for God. But God said, no, now wait, wait, wait a minute. I don't want to be. One of the pieces of the pie. I don't want to be just involved in one segment of your life and heart. I want to be the center of the pie. And I want to infuse all the pieces. Are you with me? So he wants to remain the center. So an undivided heart, once again, is a heart that has a central focus. So notice Matthew 22. 36 through 38, this individual said, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Wow. Man, that sounds pretty consuming, doesn't it? All your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. Now listen, God understands we are natural beings living on this planet. We do have various interests, loves, affections, responsibilities. He understands that. <clears throat> but he said, I want to have and maintain the preeminent place in your heart. I want to stay at the center of all that you do. Are you with me? So, in essence, you know, he's saying, I want you to learn how to remain internally focused while you're externally engaged in the affairs, responsibilities, and relationships of life. So, quite naturally, it isn't God's intention for us to visit Him in times of personal devotion, although we need it. Thank God for it. 
or in a corporate worship setting and then get up and leave as if to, as if to say, hey, I'll see you tomorrow or I'll see you next week, <laughs> right? That's not his intention. God is in every sphere and facet of our lives and existence. I love this psalm in the Message Bible. Psalm 139, 2 and 10. Notice the psalmist said, man, I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave, you know when I get back, I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me, you're there. Then up ahead, you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you'd find me in a moment because you're already there waiting. Isn't that awesome? So God is everywhere in every facet and sphere of our lives. And one of the most important things that you and I can learn to do as a Christian in maintaining intimacy with God is learning how to, to do what I call keep company with Him throughout your day. Everybody say keep company. Now, in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, and I hope you'll take this home with you uh, tonight and start practicing it. But Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 30, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm gentle, lowly in heart. You'll find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, that's a good verse. But the Message Bible opens this thing up and really makes it come alive. Notice, Jesus said, are you tired? You're worn out? you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. You'll recover your life. Now, what is that? Come to me. Get away with me. Those are personal times of devotion. In prayer, in his presence, in the word. That's essential. You need to make time for it. Right? Come to me. Get away with me. You'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. But now here's part B. This is what we're concentrating on. Walk with me. And work with me. Now he didn't say walk with me and work for me. <laughs> he said walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything or ill fitting on you. Now here's the part. Keep company with me. What? Stay consciously connected. Are you with me? Stay consciously connected. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Isn't that beautiful? So, as we noted this morning, we said God is a spirit. Our communion with him is in that realm, the realm of the heart. So, if we're going to keep company with God, then the position of our hearts is essential. Right? Now, the psalmist said in Psalm 57 and verse 7, notice this, and this is the King James because he used a certain terminology I want to concentrate on. He said, my heart is what? Fixed. My heart is fixed. What does that mean when something's fixed? That means it's set, right? It is set to remain. It is fixed. I will sing and give praise. So how, how do we do that? How do we fix our heart on God? Aren't you glad the Lord just doesn't tell us to do something and doesn't give us the instruction whereby to bring it to pass? So let's look in Romans 12. Just teaching you tonight. Is that okay? Sorry about my voice, but you'll get over it. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Romans 12, 1 through 2. 
Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living, that's lifetime sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your spiritual worship, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove or demonstrate what is that good and perfect and acceptable, uh, and excuse me, good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Once again, beautiful scripture, but I want to I want to read it to you out of the message because it opens it up. Watch this. Same verses, message Bible. Here is what I want you to do. God helping you. I want you to take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life. And I want you to place it before me as an offering. And don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even realizing it. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Now notice, he said, I want you to take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life. What is that, man? That's everything all of us do every day. (laughs) Yeah. And I want you to place it before me as an offering. Basically, he's saying, I want you to keep company with me throughout all your natural life activities and responsibilities. I want you to let this natural life that you're living be infused continually with my person and with my presence. And be mindful of me in all that you do. Are you with me? So the question is, okay, we need to keep company. We need to allow uh, our inward life to be focused while we're outwardly engaged. How do we do it? Well, that's a viable question. The answer is found in verse 2, the same chapter we just read, Romans 12. Now, once again, I'll read it out of the King James Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's interesting that Paul would mention the mind and mental realm in association with this living out uh, our lives as a living sacrifice, keeping God involved in these aspects of natural life activity and responsibility. Don't you think it's interesting? He would mention the mind. So, keeping company with God, allowing His presence to encompass our natural lives will be an absolute impossibility without something occurring in the mental realm. Because the mind uh, has a profound impact upon the position of the heart. Are you with me? The mind has a profound impact upon the position and the direction of our hearts. So it's important to realize that intimacy, passion, desire for anything, but particularly for God, all of these things have to be cultivated, aren't they? They're formulated. Passion, intimacy, and desire are primarily formulated and developed through meditation and uh, uh, thought. So we always say this. Whatever we give our minds to or our attention to most predominantly, uh, that's what takes the preeminent seat. Did you hear me? Whatever we give our attention to most predominantly, that is what takes the preeminent seat in our lives. So in the second verse in the Message Bible, we'll read it again. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that it you fit in without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God and you'll be changed from the inside out. Now, all of us have heard this particular uh, saying, whatever you keep your mind on, You what? You stay in contact with. Whatever we keep our minds on, we stay in contact with. That's why uh, Isaiah 26 and 3, as you well know, 
The Bible says, you, speaking of God, will keep him in perfect peace. Man, that's his part, right? God will keep us in perfect peace. Here comes my part. Whose mind is stayed on thee. One translation says, firmly and continually, my mind is stayed on you. That's powerful. So, how do we implement this? How can we go a little deeper this year? How can we nurture this moment-by-moment God-centeredness uh, uh, as we go about our days? This is very essential to us as a life, as a, 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 as a Christian. Amen? And uh, we want to know how to develop that. So how do we do it? Well, here's a couple of scriptures. Psalm 34 and verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. So I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Here's another one. Psalm 35 and 28. My tongue will speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day. Here's another one. Psalm 71 and verse 8. Notice, let my mouth be filled with your praise, with your glory all the day. Now, what do we see in these verses in connection with all day long, all the day, continually? What do we see? Our tongue, our lips, our mouth. Now, now why do we see that? Because our there's a connection between your mind and your mouth. Did you know that? God created it that way. Actually, our minds and our mouths are on the same frequency. Uh, you can discover that by uh, beginning to count quietly in your mind 1 to 10. Begin right now. Now say hallelujah. What happens to your counting? It stops. Because your, mi- your mouth has the power to interrupt and refocus your mind. Thank God for that. <laughs> so our words have the ability to harness our minds, captivate our thoughts, and guess what? Position our hearts. Position our hearts. God created us this way. So now we can see why uh, in Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, watch Paul's words here. I know this is simple, but I hope you'll implement it. Be not drunk with wine where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now notice how. Speaking, King James says, to yourselves. Others say among, but to yourselves. In psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to God. Giving thanks for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, one translation says, drink deeply of the Spirit. We said abide is an active word. Did you know drink is an active word? So there's something we can do to maintain a Spirit-filled life, to nurture an internal intimacy and awareness of God's presence 24-7. I guess even when you're sleeping. Amen. (laughs) But certainly in our waking hours. And so this is one of the ways that we keep company with God. The way we walk with Him and we work with Him. Notice here in Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, Paul said, you want to be filled with the Spirit? You want to drink deeply of the Spirit? You want to be cognizant of His indwelling presence? Yes, I do. Well, here's something you can do. You can speak to yourself in psalms. Now, I'm just going to give you uh, the basic definition of psalm from the Greek. And and I want to say this to you right up front. Uh, We have emphasized one aspect of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, which is the inspirational aspect. And we have neglected uh, to maybe... Uh, teach or at least enlighten people to the natural side because there's both. 
and they're both uh, effective and, and important. So I'm going to kind of lean toward uh, more of the, the natural application. So he said, why don't you sing to yourself in psalms? Well, by definition, this word psalm means a set piece of music accompanied by an instrument. So what that means is this is something someone's composed. It's a set piece of music. Maybe they got it as all these songs we sing. People get those in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. They compose them. They're accompanied by instrumentation. We sing them. Is that a valid psalm? Absolutely. Are you with me? Then also it has the meaning of an ode. O-D-E. Which means a composition in verse. Uh, it would be like the Psalms that we have, 150 of them. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Woo! All that is within me, I bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I forget not all of your benefits. You forgive all my iniquities. You heal all my diseases. You redeem my life from destruction. Thank you. An ode, a psalm. All right? Then it goes on to say, any words sung. Any words. So that means you could just sing some songs or words out of your heart to the Lord. Uh, you know, and it doesn't even have to have more than three, three words. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And my soul will follow wholly after you. Simple, isn't it? But what does it do? It grabs my mind, centers my heart. Are you with me? <laughs> then he goes on to say you can sing hymns. That's just a different style. Festive song. And then spiritual songs. Now, these are, by definition, uh, spiritual song in the Greek here means non-carnal. Not of human origin, but divine. Non-carnal. Not of human origin, but divine. So that would encompass things that you perhaps sing or speak directly by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It would also encompass singing in tongues. Other tongues. How many of you know Paul said, I will sing with the Spirit. Right? I'll sing with the understanding also. I'll pray with the Spirit. I'll pray with the understanding also. Man, if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're going to want to do that. Find somebody that knows about it. Let them talk to you, spiritual leadership here, and introduce you because it really is a tool in assisting in a, in a deeper uh, communication and walk. So, uh, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now, listen. Every single one of us have this internal conversation going on all day. I mean, you're talking to yourself, man. Stuff's going on, right? And sometimes it's not very edifying. <laughs> so Paul said, hey, why don't you take that internal conversation and redirect it toward God? Harness it. Harness it. How? Open your mouth. Captivate your thoughts. Position your heart. How? Well, sing a song to him. <laughs> Talk to him. Tell him you love him. Thank him. Worship him. Are you, are you with me? Open your mouth and begin to give him adoration. In the intermittent moments of your day. Now listen. I know that that as we said, we've all got activities. You can't be going around, uh, you know, when you're in a business meeting. We got it. I mean, I get it. I understand that. Uh, but I'm talking about those intermittent moments when there's a pause perhaps in your activity or, or you know, you're in the shower, you're riding in the car, you're vacuuming, you're cutting the grass. Or you're working on a project in the shop that you don't necessarily have to have a lot of concentration on. You think when you're vacuuming, uh, you, you could sing, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, 
so good. You think you can get the Holy Ghost in on your vacuuming? You sure can. You think riding in your truck, guys, you could turn off the radio and say, I love you, Jesus. I worship you. I praise you. I acknowledge you. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your ability. Thank you for your peace. Right? I'm engaging. There's a lot that could be going on, but I'm going to use my mouth. I'm going to captivate my mind. I'm going to harness my thoughts, and I'm going to position my heart on Him by using my mouth to do it. I mean, you might be in the shop, man. You got your, your drill. Zzz, zzz. I exalt thee. Zzz. I exalt thee. Zzz, zzz. This is natural, but it's profound. And there are also some things that you can do uh, naturally where your mind is engaged, but you can still be edifying your spirit if you're uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues. Did you know your, 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 your spiritual language comes out of your belly, like we said this morning, out of your spirit by the Holy Spirit? Paul said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit prays. So it's not a mental thing. It is a spiritual thing. I can read an entire column or book praying in other tongues and totally ascertain everything I read because they're not connected in that way. Are you with me? Now, sometimes you get mental awareness of what you're praying. But you can sing in the shower, man, sing in the car, pray in the spirit. You think I'm going to waste an entire hour and a half out riding my lawnmower just cutting grass? No, I'm not. I'm going to be worshiping. I'm going to be praising Him. I'm going to sing some songs. I'm going to talk to Him. I'm going to pray in the Spirit. Are you with me? I, I now i got electric. You know, my hedges. That's why I pray faster in tongues now. <laughs> it beats that, doesn't it? <laughs> Glory to God. No, man, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to engage with His presence. And the beautiful thing is, we can do it any moment, any time. Are you with me? But we have to practice it. So, uh, and, and, and uh, of course, there is the spiritual songs. And, and uh, as I said, that's encompassing praying in tongues, singing in tongues, and also speaking by the inspiration. And uh, if we get some unction, we'll, we'll demonstrate that. Uh, but uh, Colossians 3.16 Colossians 3.16. Notice what, uh, and I, did I give that to you guys? I may not have. But anyway, I'll just quote it to you. Uh, Paul said, you know, uh, what did he say? Somebody start me off. Colossians 3.16. Uh, Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Is that right? Yeah, in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Amen. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So sometimes people say, well, and particularly some of the guys, well, I, I, I can't sing. Listen, everybody can sing. Now, you might not need to record, <laughs> but you can sing. And God will, you know, receive it as a joyful noise. <laughs> it's just for you and him anyway. Right? But man, you, you've got some awesome worship songs that have been written. Engage yourself in that. And then after you begin doing that, uh, you know, naturally, then see if there's anything you may want to sing out of your spirit. Like I said, it doesn't have to rhyme. doesn't have to be fancy. Just something you want to say to him. I love you, Lord. I lift my voice in song. I'll walk and talk in fellowship with you all day long. See what I mean? Just sing something out of your heart. Mine rhyme most often. I don't know why. But they don't have to. Okay. They come out like that psalm, I guess. But uh, we said, once again, whatever we keep our minds on, we stay in contact with. Anybody with me? So notice Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Colossians 1 through uh, 3, 1 and 2. If you then be raised with Christ... 
Seek those things that are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God or seating, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on the things of the earth. Now, once again, what did we say uh, when you set something, set your minds? That means it is positioned, as we say, to remain. So that's going to take action on our part. It's going to take action on our part. So, so let's say, here I am now. I'm in communion. I'm fellowshipping. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Glory to God. The book's in his place. I'm going to try to keep it there. And you know, man, I get distracted or I get a little frustrated, and I realize, I realize it fell off. You know, I, I lost my, my center. So what do I do? I go right back. How? I open my mouth. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship you. I praise you. And then I put it back. And then, man, I get busy and I, I'm like, oh, Lord, I get out of sorts or something. I'm like, whoo-hoo, I'm, I'm out of my center. What do you do? Put it back. You are my strength, oh, God. I can't keep it on there. I got too much hairspray on. <laughs> you are my help, oh, God. <laughs> you are the one on whom I call. You are my shield. Well, then you'll stay. But if, it's, if it falls off, you get the point. Put it back on, right? And you keep doing that until you learn how to walk with that connection. Man, I go out to eat with people. I have a great time. But the moment that car door shuts, I'm right back here. I love you, Lord. I worship you. I'm going to say something to him. <laughs> I'm going to sing something to him. I'm going to talk to him. Because what I keep my mind on, I stay in contact with. Are you with me? There's a, there's a verse here. with the, It's kind of a compilation of the Williams and the Knox and the Philip translation. But I'll read it to you. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If you've been raised in life and fellowship with Christ... You must lift your thoughts above where Christ is, enthroned at God's right hand. Now watch. Practice occupying your minds with heavenly things, not to the passing things of the earth. So we're going to have to practice. And I'll tell you, the more of God's word you have on the inside of you, the more words to your songs you can have. Are you with me? You got some substance to use. But you can sing the ones we have here. You can sing your own. You can sing by inspiration of the Holy Ghost spiritual songs. There's an old song. It used to be like this. And this is what I, I pray that all of us will do this year. And I believe it's God's heart for us. But we're going to have to practice it. And, and it goes, all day long, I'll be with Jesus. All day long, my lips will utter praise. All day long, I'll lift my heart in worship unto you. All day long, I will be with you. Isn't that awesome? Glory to God. And you know, we can all day long. And what's going to happen, man? We're going to walk in a better place better place. Are you with me? Thank you, Jesus. I know it's simple and I know it's short, but that's what I had in my heart. Thank you, Lord. Hey, where's, come play the key, keyboards here for a minute. Let's just wait on the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Just real softly, tenderly here. I always like to at least wait, see if there's an unction, you know. Not going to make anything up, but Praise you, Jesus. Let's just let's just wait on the Lord for a minute. Brother, what, what's your name? Ben. How old are you? 21. Thank you, Lord. Ben, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Indeed. So stay close to his heart. Follow his lead. 
Because the Father has a plan for you. And as He reveals it, you follow through. And you'll come to a place of blessing and peace. And the anointing for your purpose will increase and increase. And your heart will be glad. And you'll rejoice. And when it's all said and done, you'll say, man, I'm so glad I followed your plan that I made the right choice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know, I, I, I hear the Spirit saying, there's a place that I long for you to be. where you walk in the Spirit and you have ears to hear and eyes to see. By cultivating this internal communion, this lifestyle of worship, of prayer, you'll develop a keenness, a sensitivity in your spirit and you'll become more aware of my leadings, my promptings, and my presence within. So, train yourself to cultivate this communion. Lift your thoughts to things above, and you'll walk in a deeper place and in a place of power and in a place of love. And when I speak and when I prompt, you'll readily discern and you'll hear. And as has been spoken, you'll navigate successfully all that is ahead and particularly this year. Father, we purpose to, to walk with you, to keep company with you, to be mindful of your presence every single moment. To engage in communication. And thank you, Lord. You will always meet us. You said if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. And man, we need it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So... You know, Paul said, teach and admonish one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So, you know, seasons. Seasons come. Seasons go. From one divine purpose to another they flow. From faith to faith, glory to glory. Each one builds upon the next to reveal your life story. And so, in each season, listen carefully to the Lord. Make sure that your path, your work, your ways, and His will are in one accord. For obedience is the key that unlocks the door to the fullness of the blessing that He has in store. So, now, in this season, ponder your ways. Be prayerful. Be diligent in each of your days. And your path will grow bright. And your purpose will grow clear. And you will know just what to do in this coming year. And your heart will be glad. And your family will be blessed. And your mind will be at peace. And your soul will be at rest. Now, I don't know who that's for. If it's for you, you take it. Amen.
Sometimes it's just for specific individuals. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Say, I'll take it. It's mine. <laughs> Glory. We love you, Lord. Give you praise. All day long, man. We're going to be with Jesus. It's going to all come clear. Everything's going to come clear. Hallelujah. So you just be at rest about that. Thank you, Jesus. God will make it known very, very clearly. Very clearly. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody incognito because I don't want to pull it out, pull them out there. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we got good things ahead. It's going to be a great year. We got some turbulence, but we're going to be led. We're going to stay in connection. We're going to hear, we're going to see, we're going to know. We're going to be in the right place at the right time with the right people. And we're going to miraculously thrive when it seems like all the rest of the world is in turmoil. That's what the word, word of the Lord said. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anybody got anything? That's, you're bold when you ask that and open it up, you know. Don't know what crazy stuff might happen. But has anybody got anything from the Holy Ghost? Feel like they're supposed to share before we close? I'm gonna turn it back to Pastor. Anything? Hallelujah, pastors. Thank you, Lord. This is blessed tonight, you know? Isn't that good? Disciplines of a Christian life, kind of right there. Just says, uh, about your age, 19, 20 years old, went to Bible school, learned something basic like that. Changed my life, brought order to my days. There's not a calling or, in a sense, a destination that's fulfilling. There's not stepping on a stage or leading in this capacity that will ever do it for you. It truly is, always has been, and will be forevermore just being with him. There's nothing, nothing like that to be with him when we come together, when we're on our own. And from that place of fellowship, just like he said, you'll walk with him. And you'll work with him. And you'll walk out each step. And you'll, he'll order your days. You don't have to try to figure out the end. He's the guide. He doesn't say go that way. He says, I'll lead you. I'll go with you. I'll walk with you. I'll take you to the end. To the end. The goodness of God. The, the fulfillment of Glory to God. It's not found in something. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. But he'll add to you. He'll add to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the paths of feet. The paths of feet. 
walking it out. Just walk it out. Just walk it out. One, two. Just one, two. He knows the end from the beginning. Just follow. Just follow him. And so this word tonight was so pivotal. If you'll practice it, if we'll practice it. There'll be joy for today. When you're with him, there's strength for today and strength for tomorrow. You know, I think that's one of the greatest things that we need is we need strength. The Bible talks about a merry heart when you sing. You know, what do you need? A merry heart, it's, it's a strength, isn't it? It's a strength. And um, the Bible tells us that in as we come closer to the end, men's hearts are failing them because of fear. They're failing because they're weak. But I'll tell you, that song will just bring that, jo- that joy. It'll bring that strength. It'll bring that, that drive. It'll bring that so many times we quit the destiny because we're tired. We quit the, the, pe- the plan and the path, and we bow out because we just get tired. You ever just got tired be- of not because you thought it needed to be getting there, and you'll quit? And there is no there is no there I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this um, just, just a moment and then uh, we're going to teach it on Wednesday night Proverbs chapter 4 or yeah Proverbs chapter 4 guard your heart I'm just going to give you these verses and then we're going to teach it Wednesday night Proverbs 4 guard your heart Philippians 4 that's how you guard your heart when you pray when you cast your care, he says, and the peace of God will guard your heart. So Proverbs 4, 23, Philippians chapter 4. And it is so key to guard your heart. And what you and I need to guard our heart from is the right wisdom. To have the right wisdom. To hold the right words. What we keep our mind on, we'll stay in contact with. When, we are, when our minds are fixed on the wrong wisdom, it'll lead our lives in a place. And we'll say things like this. Well, and this is one of the most dangerous things we could say. We were talking about this at lunch. Well, the Lord told me. Because just the Lord told me. When you're ready to do something or make a move or, or uh, the Bible talks about how the, the, let every word be confirmed in the mouth of two or three witnesses. But if I tell you the Lord told me, you can have no place to speak or to confirm anything into my life. It's so, these are hugely important things that we don't, that we don't just step out, in a sense, on our own because our mind has been on wisdom that's not from the Lord, but from, actually not even from this earth, but is from the enemy. And if you look in James chapter 4, I'm going to read these three places, and I can tell you every one of these things I've been in and I've missed it because of these things. And we were talking about this a little bit today. I said, what, what is it? When Could you describe to me? I was talking to Brother Marty. Um, sometimes it's this moment. I love this tonight. You know, like just because this conversation, I wish we could all go out and just say, tell me about. You know? And so sometimes um, it, it's, just, it's, it's just maybe kind of pull back the covers a little bit of, of some conversations, you know, kind of sit with sit in the same room. But James says, 4, 4 says this. It says, but if you harbor, you know, some harbor, hold in your heart. He tells us this, if you harbor where you're jealous, ah, I wish I had more. I wish I had that, what they had. You know, just jealousy. It's Sometimes we, put, we make jealousy as like such an evil, bad word um, that we don't, that we, there's things going on in us and it's actually jealousy, but we're like, well, I'm not jealous. I just want, you know what I mean? But he says this, but jealous or selfish ambition, he says, don't boast about it or deny the truth. There's times when we have something in our heart, and it's simply this, I'm jealous or selfish ambition. He says, um, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there's, there's disorder. Those two things. When you and I want something, when you, there's, there's a wisdom that comes, it's a good idea how to what? How to get that thing. What is it, that thing? You know, we were talking today. When, when did you, we, he said, I said, when did, when did you feel like you missed it? You know, one of the times he said a financial thing. It just was like so good, right? You said, man, I just, I got I to gotta make a way. 
you're like, yeah, this is good. And, and yet you, the whole time, what did you, you had that, mm-mm. you had the no, you had the knowing, no, 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 but you're like, oh, but your mind, selfish ambition, jealousy, selfish ambition or jealousy, and, and it says this, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every evil practice. One translation talks about it's not just selfish, it's selfish ambition. That's what offense is. When I sel- have a selfish view, like I, what you did to me, this, these are things that get every, every one of those, you could put those into three categories, selfish ambition or jealousy uh, or, or bitterness. Bitterness. Now, there was actually three. That was the other one was bitterness. If you're bitter, why are you bitter? You're offend- I, you can miss God. Because you think you're hearing from him, but you're not. And you're directing your steps, and you're ordering your steps, and your mind has been in contact. And so here's what you hear. Your mind is in contact because you're going over a wisdom, a mind I'm bit about just what they said or what they didn't say. I'm bitter. I'm jealous. I, I wish I had that, and I'm trying to figure a way. And I'm now to looking for the best job that pays at least this much money so I can get that but that job's going to move me over here and I'm, by moving me over here I'm forfeiting the plan of God right here anyway this is what we're talking about psalms, hymns, spiritual songs the key to all of this guarding your heart what I found you're going to see it in Philippians 4 if you'll read it is with thanksgiving and that right there uh, if I, this morning as I was listening to him this morning as I was out to lunch with him this morning as I was here here's what I heard all of the joy and all of the things and I love to do this what I hear is thankfulness coming out thank you Lord 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 Philippians 4 says this let, let, let cast all of your cares with, with thanksgiving and the peace of God will guard your heart there's something about thankfulness that keeps me not bitter there's something about thankfulness that keeps me not jealous there's something about thankfulness that kills selfish ambition and 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 all of a sudden god just is taking me on the journey and i'm singing the song the whole time without a platform with with just him with just him without a brand new car with with just him and with just him with him it's gonna, and then it moves to this place of, oh, that's just a car. Oh, that's just a platform. Oh, that's, that's just that with him. With him. And that's what God wants for you and me. And that right there, what you heard tonight, just that simple singing the song, keeping your mind fixed on him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Selfish ambition no longer drives your life. Jealousy no longer moves you out. Bitterness no longer poison your days. From a song, from a simple thing, is this tonight. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for, oh, just every, every bit that you designed and desire us to get from this word tonight. That we would get it. That we'd hear it again. Lord, thank you for that we'd make space to hear what you're saying again. And just, Holy Spirit, that we thank you for bringing back to our remembrance the things that you spoke uh, so intimately and so clear. Thank you for the words to bring strength, to bring encouragement. But, Father, for to bring order this year. House in order. Father, we thank you for this. House in order bring order to our days, order to our lives. We thank you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, God bless you guys tonight. Thank you for joining us. There's something about pulling, you know, isn't there? Showing up, and I believe you got what you came for, and the Lord will continue to minister to you as you go. Amen, amen. God bless you guys. Tuesday night of prayer, Wednesday night. Otherwise, we'll see you later.